<laughs> we are. We are live, and I am excited to welcome you officially to three ways to better use Instagram for your business. It's August 2020. We are live all over the world, and I want to welcome people from the United States and uh, beyond. Um, I am your host, uh, Dave Kirpin. Um, I have a bunch of businesses, but today I've got my apprentice hat on, the co-CEO and co-founder of Apprentice. And joining me, uh, speaking of a lot of hats, is my good friend, Andrea Ball, an author, a speaker, a consultant, an entrepreneur. Um, Andrea, good to see you. Yeah, great to be here, Dave. Thank you so much. It's fun. Thank Thanks for having me. And for those of you just joining us, if you uh, are following along at home and you want to get into the social media spirit and you want to win a prize, uh, you, you can use the hashtag IG4biz, IG, the number four, B-I-Z. Uh, we're going to be giving away some books uh, from, uh, from Andrea, from me, maybe from a couple other friends you never know. So uh, keep those uh, social media posts coming uh, on the social network of your choice using the hashtag IG4biz. If you could share with me in the chat, if you haven't yet, uh, or online, if you're watching online or LinkedIn or wherever you're watching, what's your experience with Instagram? Uh, did you just join it because you, you finally had to follow your kids? Uh, have you been on there for a while, but you don't quite get the business implications yet? Have you tried Instagram advertising? Um, do you feel like you're an expert? Are you already using Reels? And, and, and rocking out with the latest Instagram product feature. Uh, let us know your experience and I'll, I'll check momentarily so I know how to frame things for you. Um, also, if you have questions, please feel free to post those questions in the chat or, or you can post them on social media using that hashtag. Um, and Andrea and I will get to them as we can. And if we don't get to them live, um, I'll make sure that somebody from uh, one of our teams gets to them uh, at some point. Responsiveness, one of my core values, so we will make sure to take uh, to take care of you. Um, we're going to talk about three main ways. Uh, number one, we're going to talk about knowing your goals, your audience, and the right content for each. Uh, Andrea is going to jump in. Uh, she is uh, much more the ads expert, and she's going to talk about using Instagram ads more effectively. And then we'll hop back to me. I'm going to talk about influencers and one of my favorite concepts, uh, in social media to talk about micro influencers. So uh, stay tuned. Let's start with knowing your goals, audience and the right content for each. Um, it, it shocks me how many folks are still using social networks in general and Instagram specifically without having a real strategy. You've got to have a strategy. So where, where does that strategy start? It starts with goals. What are your goals? Do you want to create more engagement? Do you want to get product feedback? Do you want to sell, sell, sell? Do you want to build your brand? Um, knowing your goals ahead of time and setting specific goals will help you create the right content and build the right strategy. Who is your audience? You don't have to be on every social network. Uh, uh, you, you, you have to be on the social networks where you're prospects and your customers are. So it's really important to understand who your audience is, who are your buyers, who are your influencers that you want to reach. I will say that Instagram is pretty darn widespread these days, right? It's probably right up there with Facebook in terms of the widest range of folks to reach. Um, I might have said for the real youngsters to go to TikTok, but <laughs> I think you can reach them on Instagram too. <laughs> and I might have said for the sort of oldest folks in your demo to think LinkedIn, but these days you can probably reach them on, on, on Instagram too. But still thinking about um, who your audience is going to, who your audience is going to help you craft the right content and the right strategy for, uh, for Instagram. So you want to craft a message that's going to connect with your audience. And the nice thing about Instagram is you can create that message using visuals, using photos, using videos, uh, using stories. Um, keep the goals and values of your customer in mind when you're creating your content. You certainly don't want to offend. Uh, you want to you want to attract and excite your audience, but you don't want to offend them. I'll give you an example of potentially offensive post in, the, in, in, in a bit. Um, and create content that relates to who you're targeting. So if you're targeting, um, if you're targeting kids, um, you really probably want to focus with stories where they're where, where they're where they're tuned in more than feed more than feed posts. 
Um, if you're targeting um, a business audience and you have a verified account where you can share a link, you want to you want to share link posts. Um, if you don't have a verified account, where you can share a link yet. You can do it with ads, um, but you can also put, a, of course, a, a link in your bio and change that link depending on where you want to drive folks. Um, I've got some examples here. Um, so, uh, some of you asked questions ahead of time, and 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 one of you, uh, shout out to uh, Dave, uh, Dave out there from Fort Washington, my hometown, said, uh, "What's the best way to increase engagement?" And uh, so my answer to that, without a doubt, is stories. And it surprises me, Andrea. There's still a lot of folks using Instagram that aren't really using stories as much, um, especially yeah. dare I say the older generation. Um, because the older generation is sort of used to the old way of social media, which was which was uh, which was feed news feed, um, but stories are the primary driver of engagement on Instagram. So uh, if if you are a business looking to increase your engagement, um, a great way to do that is stories, and specifically stories that actually ask for something. So you can see some examples here, right? Summer Fridays asking, what kind of product do you want to make us? Do you want us to make next a poll post? which is actually allowing, or, or sorry, a question post, which is actually allowing people to input a question here. Um, a poll post here, when Instagram video first launched, how many videos were uploaded in the first 24, 20, 24 hours? So this, this is something, you know, it's very easy when, you, when, you're, when you're in your feed uh, or when you're scrolling through your stories to click here on one of the answers to guess. Um, and same thing here, what topic should we cover in 2019? What I love about, um, Poll, poll posts, uh, poll stories, and uh, and question stories on Instagram is they're going to give you a lot of feedback, a lot of valuable intelligence that you can use to create your content, to yeah. build your company, to build your product, to build your marketing plans, to build your ad ad campaign. I'm amazed at how many people comment more in stories than on the regular posts. It's just really so much, so much feedback. Yeah, you, you get a lot of feedback, and and, and mm -hmm. to me that's really valuable. And yeah. it's almost um, I don't know for me it's exciting to get um, all all the messages in my inbox for people yeah. that love 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 my content. No, comments are fine, but I don't know. It's, I find that a lot of the comments, a lot of the engagement on posts, kind of spammy anyway. They're not necessarily that useful or valuable. Whereas comments um, and and messages from uh, from from stories tend to be more meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a, a, a likable client example, uh, stop and shop, food retail, their audiences, families, their content is about emphasizing quick and easy meals, beautiful uh, appetizing food. I think we all we all know that food food is something that we like to see on, on Instagram and, and performs pretty well. Um, if you have a clothing company, you know, you, you probably wanna show um, your clothes uh, being worn by models or attractive people you on instagram you really don't need uh supermodels to sell your to sell your clothes a uh, real people can work but i mean the reality is attractive is always better um it's just people like looking at clothes on people that they find attractive photo posts um and, and andrea will get into turning this into an ad of course um but you want to use creative captions um hashtags that are going to attract more people to your posts over time um, Instagram is probably the place where there's no such thing as over hashtagging. Um, I, I would say that you can always hashtag in the first comment as well. And that way you're not clouding your, uh, the, the post itself with too many hashtags, but you are, um, giving folks that are, that are searching hashtags an opportunity to find your content and obviously high quality images with great lighting. Lighting goes a really long way in the world of Instagram. And so when you're, you know, I'm, I'm assuming most of you guys are doing your own your own photography, uh, which is fine if you're not using an agency or whatnot. But but really, um, really focus on lighting and 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 make sure you you go the extra mile to create great lighting opportunities for your content. Shoppable posts. So uh, Instagram allows you to create posts that 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 folks can shop right from the posts from. Um, really great way to drive. Uh, sales if you are in the product business um, and you'll definitely increase your engagement quite a bit. I mentioned stories. Um, I, I see more and more ads uh, in, in, in the stories feeds and I, and I think they perform pretty well. Um, 
here are a couple of examples from Nike. You can do a picture uh, or a very short video, um, a CTA with swipe up. So if you wanna drive people to a particular link, uh, stories are definitely a better way to do that than, uh, than, than uh, uh, page posts. And I mentioned videos, um, 30 to 60 seconds. Um, if they're longer, they get into uh, IG uh, TV which is actually my next slide. So here are three, are three other uh, types of content on, on, on Instagram. Um, IGTV, longer uh, form videos, uh, uh, good for tutorials uh, and longer form content. Um, IG Live, we're actually live right now on Instagram. Yeah. Hi. Um, good for engaging audience, right? directly engaging your audience, which is exciting. Um, I've seen a lot of really great Instagram Lives with folks during this pandemic. Uh, where people like to tune into something that's live, there's, it's, it's more exciting to be live. Uh, there are, you know, you have guests on. Um, my favorite uh, Instagrammer to go live, if you guys are not following LL Cool J, oh my God. Andrea, have you watched LL Cool J live? No. <laughs> it is amazing. He does trivia contests. Um, so he has people on live and he goes, he goes live with them and challenges them to find five pro household products in their house within 30 seconds. It's the it's like reality TV. It's really, That's really awesome. It's I gotta really, watch that. If you're not, if you haven't watched it yet, check out LL. Um, and then <laughs> Instagram Reels is Instagram's brand newest product. One one core principle of social media is it's almost always, in fact, it's always great to use the newest, latest features of the social network because, as Andrea knows. Uh, after a while, it's going to be hard to get people's attention using that product. You're going to have to advertise. But in the beginning, Instagram is going to push their latest feature, like hard. And all the other social networks too, by the way, when they launch a new feature, a new product, they, they push it hard. So Instagram is jumping into competing with TikTok right now. And so if you dare, you know, jo join the sort of young people party with with a, a, a short a video to the tune of, of some music, um, try Reels, try Reels, because you'll probably get a lot of visibility uh, very, very quickly. All right, it's the time for our very first giveaway. Uh, uh, I'm gonna ask Sam from the Apprentice team to give me the name of one person who has either tweeted or used Instagram or used LinkedIn so far during this webinar. Uh, with, with the hashtag IG4Biz, we're going to give away the third edition of Likeable Social Media, the New York Times bestselling book on social media that I wrote ooh, quite a while ago. But the good news is this is the third edition, so it's the latest and greatest. Yeah. And our first winner is Charlie Anderson. Ooh. Congratulations, Charlie Anderson. We'll get you a copy of the book. Let us know your address. And if you haven't won yet, keep on using that hashtag out there in the wilderness and I'm gonna um, oh I'm gonna turn it over to Andrea in a minute but first a quick a quick word from our sponsor um, <laughs> uh, is is um, uh, a company that we created a year ago now that connects entrepreneurs and small business owners like you uh, with the world's brightest most uh, driven college students um, Erica is one of our apprentices as just an example of many she's a, a, a Harvard uh, economics governing philosophy major a, a brilliant young person um, uh, Andrea, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know you work with, uh, with an apprentice. Uh, yes. And I love Molly. She's awesome. She's been working with me for a while now and, um, she just does all the scheduling of my, uh, social posts. She puts, she does all kinds of things that has helped my SEO and my website. And just, we've been able to get some systems in place. So super excited. It's just a great program. I highly recommend it. Well, thank you very, very much. And um, as you just mentioned, uh, um, uh, your apprentice can uh, do any of these things, including creating content for Instagram for you, uh, social media marketing, biz dev, research, scheduling, prospecting, analysis, uh, really, you name it. They're not going to get you coffee because it is remote, but <laughs> you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to be hard pressed to find somebody to hire to get you coffee these days. Get your own coffee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, so uh, the promo that we're running today is the uh, first month free. Uh, with the code uh, IT4Biz, uh, you get your whole first month free. Uh, and if you want to sign up to schedule a call, uh, go to calendly.com slash choose apprentice or our website, 
uh, chooseapprentice.com. And without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Andrea, to talk about our second point, which yeah. is how to better use Instagram ads more effectively. Yeah, awesome. I'm super excited. So I um, I specialize in advertising. I've, you know, I did all social media for, for a long time, and I've kind of really narrowed that down into uh, advertising because I love it because it's so trackable and so, so uh, easy to really hyper target your perfect customer. And I talk mostly when I'm talking about advertising, I'm mostly talking about Facebook. I'm, I mostly put the Facebook hat on with that, but they use the same platform. So everything, every time I talk about Facebook advertising, you can just substitute Instagram advertising for that. And I actually have some ads that perform better for my own business where I'm talking about Facebook, you know, from the Facebook lens um, on Instagram, they perform better on Instagram than they do on Facebook. So, you know, it's an amazing platform. So let's, let's dive in and I'll talk about how to um, really get, get things rolling for you. So, you know, the big thing is that Instagram advertising is growing. Facebook has been, was the kind of first platform for advertising, but Instagram growth is available. And as more people use Instagram, as Instagram's user base grows, that means there's more room in the newsfeed for Instagram ads as well. So they're, they're really rolling. So we can keep moving here. So some of the big reasons are to, to advertise on Instagram is, is the awesome targeting. There are so many things that you can do with targeting. You can target specific keywords. You can target people who have been fans of your Facebook page or have interacted with you on your Facebook or your Instagram business feed. You can retarget those people to show them ads. You can, um, you know, narrow further so that you're saying, um, that you've got, let's just go back one slide and I'll talk about that one too. Like where you've got engaged shoppers and then you can narrow further by having some extra keywords in there. So you can combine keywords and you can um, it, uh, advertise by job titles too. So that's really cool. Love that. And then, yeah, it's so, it's so great. So if you know that you're a B2B business and you wanna reach people who are in HR, who, are, who, who are, have the job title of CEO or who have a job title of sales and marketing, you can target those people with Instagram ads. Yeah, it's funny, you know, when I first, the, the, one of the stories I love to tell is when I first uh, discovered how the hyper-targeting uh, on, on Facebook and, and Instagram, I, I took out an ad targeting uh, I think at the time it was 34 year old female married employees of likable that live in Port Washington, New York. And of course of the billion people on Facebook, only one person met that criteria, <laughs> my wife. I don't think you can do that anymore. You can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, one. they, they got wise to that, Dave, you wrecked yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other thing I love, love, love about Instagram adver advertising is the retargeting. So you know, some people say, well, I don't have a big budget to do advertising. You don't need a big budget. All you need is like $5 a day and you can retarget people who've been to your website, who've watched your videos, who've interacted with your Instagram page, who have, uh, who are on your email list. And all of a sudden you're showing up all the time on Instagram. They're like, whoa, you're just, you're everywhere on Instagram. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm only spending five bucks a day. And, and they, they think that you're, um, you're just, you know, they see you all the time. So it's really cool. And number three is the, um, yeah, they're highly trackable that it, what I really, really love too. So this is an ad on Instagram. It goes to your website and then it goes to your thank you page. So they give you their email address and then they get to this thank you page where they get whatever thing you were promising on your website, like this, for example, this, um, I have a pricing guide for pricing your services. And so I send people over there from Instagram. This is actually the ad, the actual ad that performs the best for me on Instagram. So I send them there. And then with the Facebook pixel, which is also tracking with Instagram ads, obviously as well, I'm able to track exactly how much it costs me to get a new subscriber on my email list. And now I can follow up with those people. I'm taking them off of Instagram or off of Facebook and putting them onto my own, what I own, which is my email list. And I'm really 
uh, focusing on my perfect potential customers there. And now I'm able to follow up with those people over and over again in email. And that's what I love. I, I honestly don't use Instagram for business purposes other than ads. I use it mostly to post about my travel pictures, which I'm not posting as much anymore, I'm traveling around Colorado. But I use Instagram ads to really, uh, really focus that, um, th that work and getting people over to my email, email list. So it's very trackable. And then you can really know which keywords are working for you, which images are working for you, and you can test different things there. Speaking of testing, Andrea, we have a, a, a quick question from Maria. She wants to know how, what amount she should spend for an ad like early on. Like how, how, how does she know where, where to start? Right, right. And that's one of the biggest questions we get all the time is um, basically it's hard to necessarily answer that because different niches perform differently. Like I have some clients that leads are costing them 50 and hundred dollars. That's for a very um, expensive product then later, which that works for them. But mostly I think you want to focus on, I would suggest like $10 a day uh, for five days and seeing where you end up. Now, things like webinars cost a little bit more. I usually find those leads are costing maybe around $5, sometimes $10 if you're, if it's in more of a B2B market. Um, so it's, it's important to test your own baseline so you can figure that out. Usually things that are the cheapest to uh, for lead costs are things like checklists, uh, maybe like if you're like a recipe download, a, a free ebook, things like that can give you pretty good lead costs in um, for those instant access type of things. So here's some examples of things of people using um, both like shopping, shopping posts, and these were all um, advertised. They're all they all have. Oh no, not the one in the middle doesn't have an advertised. Oh yeah, it does. It says sponsored. Yeah. So anytime it says sponsored, then you know that that is an ad, obviously. And so then you it's clickable. That's the other thing I like about ads is that if you don't have enough followers to get those clickable posts, you can do that with ads, and it doesn't have to be super expensive. So that's a great way to to make sure your your Instagram posts are clickable. And the image has to be really eye-catching. You can see like bright colors work really well. Uh, you can have, you wanna have text on Instagram ads, be, um, images, because you don't have very much text in the actual ad space itself. You can see there's only two lines of text and you don't get like a headline like you do with Facebook ads. So your Instagram ad has to have some good text on it. They don't allow like full text. They will stop your ad if it has too much text, but things like book covers or product covers don't count in the text rules. So you can see you can make this book cover really big. Um, and then the image on the left with Eckhart Tolle, I don't know how to say his name. I always get that messed up, but, but it has like, you know, about a, a quarter of that image is text. And that's probably about the max that you can do. They've lifted the text rule, but it's, it's um, yeah, about a quarter of, of the image can be text. Usually I try and make it a little bit less just to make sure it passes through. Yeah. Images got, got I, I still see so many, uh, uh, posts with so much text guys yeah. people do not want to see the text they not they're not going to click their your ads will not perform your content will yeah. not do well you, you know, on instagram you have to focus on images over text yeah yep so true and then Instagram video ads are really great too because you can have a little bit more, it can be a little more eye-catching. You can have more text in them like flashing. So you're telling more of a story there. And um, these were some great examples and it's just really eye-catching. I do oftentimes find that images perform a little better than, than video for advertising conversion. Now it can depend and it's always good to test but that's just kind of my experience there. 
Um, some, some ad basics. You can create Instagram ads on your Instagram account directly. I prefer creating them in the Facebook ads area because you have a little more uh, control over, you have a little more options, you have a little more control over how you can do that targeting a little bit more. Um, and I, so I like doing them that way. You're going to use the Facebook pixel to track the Instagram ad. So you take the Facebook pixel from your ads account on Facebook, put it onto your website. It's very easy to do. They have some partner integrations where if you have a WordPress site, you can easily just download a, the plugin from the Facebook ads area and put that in there. It's, and everything else is the same setup. And what you're going to do instead, if you wanna do Instagram only ads, you're gonna indicate that you want it to go on mobile only and Instagram. And I'll show you that um, placement in a little bit. So there, there are extra placements as well. So you can place ads in the Instagram stories and in Facebook stories, and you can also really split out those placements so you can test, hey, does an Instagram story perform better than the Instagram feed. So I've done those kinds of tests. I do actually find that Instagram feed performs a little better just because there's not as many people looking at Instagram stories as there are just scrolling through the feed. Um, but sometimes it can, you know, again, it's all about the testing. So you can also style your ad and that's important to make sure your ad is styled for the Instagram feed if you are gonna use the Instagram feed because, or I mean the Instagram stories area, if you're gonna use Instagram stories placement, you want that kind of longer image or you can do some other things to make it look good in the, in the stories area. I love that, uh, the, the fireworks, uh, the fireworks, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah, really colorful images do really well. So here's how you edit the placements and just select Instagram only placements for your ads. You're in the placements area in the setup, campaign ad set ad, and then you select just the mobile because Instagram doesn't place ads on desktop, uncheck the desktop, and then only check the Instagram feed. And if you want the stories, you can um, do stories as well. So you can say, let's just test Instagram versus Facebook. And I've done that lots of times just to say which one's performing better. And then the stories add the cool thing they've got it with, um, and the reason I like using the Facebook um, tool to, to place ads is that they've got some templates and things like that that you can use so that you're customizing this and making it look really nice without having to create new images. And the, what I like about the way I've done it here is I've used the square image that I would use in, um, in the regular feed placement, but when you use that, it actually takes the text from the first line of your ad and puts it into the story. Now you've got a little more text available in your story than you would have normally for, for images, but it, you wanna test and again, see what, what works best there. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. So here's an example of um, some testing I did. I was testing out video ads and I was testing Facebook feed versus Instagram feed versus the story feed. And this was just a very small test that I did on that. Um, I didn't spend a ton of money on it, but I did actually find out that the Facebook feed happened to do better for this particular ad. And I thought I was going to do a little bit better with me, a little bit more me talking versus just like some images as a slideshow. I had one was an image slideshow ad or a video. And then the other one was me actually talking where I had the, the, um, the captions underneath and things like that. And I thought I looked a little cuter in the other one, but that's okay. I get it. People, you know, that's why you test. Cause I, I guess wrong all the time. Yeah. If I'm hearing you right, well, you know, there's so many different types of ads uh, and, 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 and ways to do this. And the best real strategy is to test a lot to, at, at smaller amounts to see what's right. work for you. Right, right, right. So um, and because Instagram has like um, not much text available, you want that key content in the first two sentences of your ad text that you're going to use. And again, that 
text on the ad image. And you don't want to use hashtags in ads. Don't use hashtags in ads. Use hashtags in organic content for sure. Do not use hashtags in ads. You don't want someone clicking on a hashtag away from where you really want them to go, which is your website to subscribe to your stuff. And then you also have to make sure that your website looks good on mobile. So take a look at that. Um, I just had that happen recently where it looked great on desktop and it was a client site and I was like, oh, whoops, that, that actually all the text ended up all weird. So you got to make sure it's mobile optimized. And then you're tracking those conversions with the pixel and testing demographics. Really good point. I, I really like the hashtag point because whereas if you're not spending money on, on, on an ad, um, hashtags are a great way to bring right people into your content without spending money. Right. If you are spending money, hashtags are a very poor way of having people go away from your ad that you've spent all this money yeah, on. So exactly, exactly. You're just advertising the hashtag at that point. <laughs> all right, so now a word from our other sponsor. And I yeah. just want to say that Andrea is truly one of the absolute best uh, resources and experts in, in, in the world on this stuff, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so this is my top 10 blog post. This is free. So you can go grab this for free. And I like I mentioned, I kind of have a Facebook centric viewpoint, but this really goes into how to put the pixel on your site, how to um, approach your ads and your ad strategy, um, as well as talking about things like the business manager. And all of those things are still relevant to Instagram advertising because you're doing all of that on the Facebook platform, but, and you need those things as well. So if you're confused about advertising at all, go grab this this free ebook so that you can get started because it really gets you started off from the beginning. No better deal than free, guys. So uh, mm -hmm. check it out. That's that's awesome. And thank you so much for offering that, uh, Andrea, yeah. to our viewers. And speaking of free, uh, we're going to give away our second free book. This one mm -hmm. uh, from Andrea. It's it's her book, Facebook Ads Made Simple: How to Create High Converting Facebook Ads in an Hour or Less. And again, like like we keep saying, um, this will include Instagram ads too. But but you probably if you're if you're tuning in to see Instagram ads for your business, you probably want to think about Facebook ads for your business also. Really yep. And my winner for that is Caroline Quinn. Caroline Quinn, Woo! congratulations! You are our winner. Get us your address, and we will get uh, uh, Andrea's book out to you. I, let us know what form you want the book in as well. Of course, uh, we can do audio, we can do ebook, we can do uh, old school book book. Um, okay, our third point, I'm going to uh, grab the mic again, because uh, this is something I feel really passionately about. We're going to talk about influencers, and more important, we're going to talk about micro-influencers um, on, on Instagram. And Instagram is probably the top social network when it comes to using influencers these days. Yes, Twitter, yes, TikTok, um, yes, Facebook, yes, even LinkedIn to a lesser extent. But I think when I think about use of influencers uh instagram is probably the social network that's the most uh that's the most potent uh so what is an influencer i've got probably the most famous influencer in the world up here kim kardashian um but influencers are instagram users that have an established credibility and audience they have a potentially a very big audience and they can persuade others uh by virtue of their trustworthiness their authenticity and frankly their content so when kim kardashian uh shares this post of uh, sugar sugar bear hair i think <laughs> yeah. uh, vitamins um uh, a lot of people buy them and she gets paid a lot for that um so uh, Insta uh you know ads with, with with traditional instagram ads that andrew talked about you're paying uh facebook but with influencers you're working directly you could work with through a network but you can also work directly with with the influencer let's talk about micro influencers though because my guess is just about a hundred percent if not a hundred percent of the people watching are not going to be working with kim kardashian on your products and services and um and promoting through her but much relevant for you is this notion of micro influencers micro influencers are 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 a step down from kim kardashian in the world of influence um they might have a pretty good social media following might have might be five five thousand might be fifty thousand might be a hundred fifty thousand but they don't have millions of, of followers but the thing is they have a much better access you have a much better chance of reaching somebody with five thousand followers than you have reaching somebody with five million followers so it's like why bother trying to uh 
sort of get Kim Kardashian's attention all day when you can get, you know, Kim Johnson's attention, who happens to have 5,000 followers and everyone in your town follows Kim Johnson. If, if you have a local product, it's more important to reach Kim Johnson than Kim Kardashian. By the way, Kim Johnson doesn't exist. So don't all go. Look <laughs> um, so re reaching influencers, I'll just call influencers for now. But my point is influencers don't have to be Kim Kardashian. They can be this sort of micro influencers. They, they're another great way to reach your target audience, to build brand awareness, to build trust, to, that association with um, somebody that's trusted in their community or in, or in their niche or in their space. Or in, uh, and, and you can market your products without having to spend on ads. In fact, in many cases, you don't have to pay an influencer or anything. You just give them a free product. Um, so my recommendation, if you have a, uh, a small business that is a national in scope, think about reaching uh, influencers in your space. So maybe if, if you have a, a, a product, you might think about fashion influencers. If you have a, a, a toy, you might want to think about mommy influencers. If you have um, a, uh, uh, a restaurant that with many locations, uh, you might want to think about who, who that restaurant is targeting and, and, and an influencer in that category. If you have a small business that's lo a local business, think about the folks in your community who happen to have a lot of followers. So in real life, if pre the internet, pre social media, um, you, you, you might, you might want to get the attention of the captain of the football team. If you have a, a product for, for, for young people or the head of the PTA, uh, if you have a product for, for moms, um, in social media, on Instagram now, you just want to find the equivalent of that. It, it might not be the actual, uh, it might, may or may not be the actual head of the, the football team or, 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 or the or president of the PTA, but it's somebody in your community that has a, a, a lot of uh, followers, relatively speaking. And reach out to them, engage with them, um, and, and, and offer them, hey, would you like a free product? Would you like 90% uh, uh, off? Uh, I, I would not pitch them on like 20% off, 30% off. That's really salesy. But if you can give them something for free, um, you know, I get books sent to me all the time uh, as an example, because I guess I'm an influencer in the, for, for, for authors. Um, give them something for free um, and they'll probably write, you know, share on, on Instagram without your even asking. But if they don't, obviously go ahead and say, hey, did you get this? Uh, you know, how do you feel comfortable sharing a post? Um, the, your potential impact here is equal to or a lot greater than ads without necessarily the same cost as ads. So a quick recap, and then we're going to take some questions, and we are going to give away um, a grand prize. Not yeah. one, not two, but three books. <laughs> so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be at you for a few more minutes here. Um, we talked about the importance of knowing your uh, goals, audience, and the right content for each, and really thinking strategically before you jump in and spend your precious money and your even more precious time um, on Instagram. We talked about how to use Instagram ads more effectively, um, really getting into how, how to use that platform and test all the different types of, of ads that you can use. Um, and we talked about using micro influencers more effectively. So I'm gonna remind you one more time to, uh, while we take questions, uh, to use the hashtag IG4Biz uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Uh, you can even use it on Facebook. I don't know if my team is checking out Facebook though. <laughs> Hashtags haven't really taken off on Facebook, pretty much yeah, everywhere so else, much, yeah. um, but uh, Facebook. And, um, while we wait, I'm going to see, I think I saw some questions, Andrea. Yeah, so, yeah there's uh, some here. questions that have come through and I have a couple of thoughts too. So yeah, and the grand prize is actually, Dave, did you mention that this, this third book, Digital Mar Marketing Growth Hacks, we're co-authors on. So that's super fun, along with a num of like bunch of other fabulous authors in our author group, but that's Amazing kind of fun. Amazing leading experts. <laughs> you got you got Eric Qualman, you got John Janch, uh, 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 Eric uh, Amolt, uh, um, uh, Jamie Turner, just some, just, just some terrific, Vivica, yeah. uh, you know, a yeah. LinkedIn expert. So yeah. terrific uh, uh, experts here. And you can also win my book and Andrea's book. It's a, it's a great grand prize. Okay, yeah. uh, questions. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can do this well all by myself and open up these questions. 
Uh, everyone always asks, will the content be available? Yes, yeah. we're recording. We're going to send it out to you afterwards, for sure. Christina is asking, uh, how could she make her Instagram look more pleasing to the viewer? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would need to know a little bit more of information. I don't know, uh, Andrew. Do you have any general? Well, thoughts? I think the thing the thing that you might be asking. So a lot of the a lot of the um, the big trend for a while on Instagram was these grids. You know, you would have like the the grid view. So it. I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if that's what Christine is asking, but like they would have like all different kinds of. Um, of uh you know a pattern that you would do on your instagram uh feed so that it all like when you looked at your profile it all looked super coherent and you know together and there was like maybe a pattern that trend i've from what i've seen and heard is kind of going away a little bit um and just kind of focusing on really great interesting content so um but I do think there are some ways to make it more pleasing. I think good lighting. I think sometimes what people do is have a particular kind of theme of filter. You know, there's one um, realtor that I worked with who had a real color filter that she would put on almost all of her photos that she would do for about houses and the local area. So that could be something that's kind of a signature thing that you do is a is a color filter and figuring that out but i feel like there's also a lot to be said about authentic content that is really coming from the heart and really kind of telling a story i think that trend is a little bit more um more important than finding the most beautiful like perfect photo yeah Okay, thank you. I'm gonna zip through some of the other questions here. Um, Marcy uh, asked, why does Instagram not interface with user on a desktop in a more fuller format? I'm not sure, but it, it's really, Instagram was mobile from the start. Um, it's really, uh, it, it was the vision of uh, the, its founder, uh, Kevin Seistrom was just always mobile beauty. And so I, I, they're never gonna go desktop. It's definitely, yeah. uh, it's all about uh, the phone. Yeah. Um, Scott, my good buddy and uh, also great, uh, 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 Apprentice a customer asks, as a small business, did you just learn social media yourself or would it be more worthwhile to pay a thousand dollars a month for experts to do it? I mean, that's a tough, tough question. And I, I have a huge bias with the two social media companies, Scott. So, uh, and, 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 you know, Andrea does this, you know, for a living too, and helps lots of folks uh, build their social media businesses. I think um, it, it ultimately really depends on you. I mean, what I would say is hire an apprentice to do it all. Um, but um it's up to you. I think there's lots of great, great folks out there that you can hire. Some of them are on this on this webinar, um, mm -hmm. and they're 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 folks that prefer to really learn this stuff themselves. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea to know um, kind of what's possible with you know know what's happening, um, and do it do it yourself a little bit. But then, you know, you you're ultimately not needing to be an expert in all things, right? So you've got to outsource some things in order to grow your business. So I think I think that's. That's a big. Um, Shro Sh I'm going to mess up your name. Shomo, Shumo um, is asking, could you comment on Instagram for business consulting services? Um, I, I think for business consulting, I would be kind of like Andrea. I, I would be more focused on ads than content. Um, I might try stories and, and yeah, share yeah. some links. You know, like whenever I have a blog post, I do share it um, in my stories. A uh, new post on Inc. I write for Inc. Magazine. So when I have a new post, I... I'll share it. I, I do get I do get some nice uh, uh, engagement on that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't try to sell business consulting on Instagram directly. I think it's about brand building at that point. You know, giving little tips to to let people know that you know what you're doing, that you know what you're talking about, and use it for brand building. Use ads for then driving people to your services and to like driving people to your email list. All right, we are just about time for our grand prize giveaway. Yeah. Very last chance to win all three books by using the hashtag uh, ig for biz But uh, first, a quick reminder of, of, of our offers today. Um, from Apprentice, you can get the first month uh, completely free using the code ig for biz uh, To uh, schedule a call and learn more, go to chooseapprentice.com or calendly.com slash chooseapprentice. And uh, Andrea has a free ebook on andreaval.com slash top 10 94 page ebook uh, with Facebook ads pixel what marketers need to know Facebook advertising strategy for any type of business and more uh, terrific free ebook definitely get your hands on this guys 
uh, using the link right here. Um, and without further ado, I am going to choose our grand prize winner. It's Evan Mountain. Evan Mountain, you have a very cool name and you are a grand okay. prize winner today. Nice you win all three books, Evan. Get us yep. your uh, info. And um, if you have any further questions, you feel free to um, to, to, to post them. Yeah. Uh, we will definitely get to them. Andrea, what did you One want to quick ask? question. Yeah, Christina's asking, um, she won my book, or no, not, not Christina. Wait, hold on. I was, I pulled, um, Caroline. Caroline won my book. Where do they send the address to, to get, get the uh, You can send them to um, uh, my, uh, Sam, Sam's uh, email from our team, sam at chooseapprentice.com. Uh, the email address, sam, S-A-M, at chooseapprentice.com. Thank you for asking. And most important, Thank, uh, thank you, Andrea Val, for joining me today. Um, thank you to Molly and Sam and Jalen and Rob from our teams for helping to make this uh, webinar possible. And thanks most of all to you guys. I appreciate you spending your precious time with us today. And I wish everyone a wonderful, fantastic, and safe and healthy rest of your week. Um, until next time, bye-bye. All right, we are still live. <laughs> I'm gonna hang up. Great to see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>